Sometimes, by default, when we think of a seasonal story, habit takes us to a different season and a different story, perhaps a story about the child in the manger. I hope by now you know that that story didn't happen in that season. We are in the season of Yom Truah, the day of the resounding blast. The traditional Torah readings are, on the first day, the life of Sarah, Genesis 21, and on the second day, the binding of Isaac, Genesis 22. These chapters reflect a fuller picture, in shadow, of the life of that baby that was born in that major, probably around this time of year. It might interest you to know that Genesis 22 is traditionally read as part of the morning service in the synagogue every day of the week except Shabbat. Rabbi Don Abarbanel, who was the leader of Spanish Jewry at the time of their persecution and expulsion, maintains that in the binding of Isaac's story lies the entire glory of Israel and their merit before the Father in heaven, and that is why it pervades our prayers every day. The narrative does in fact say that Isaac was born at the Moed, one of the appointed times described in Leviticus 23. You undoubtedly have already learned about the beautiful prophetic picture presented, the picture of a father who is willing, at Jehovah's command, to give up the most precious possession of his life, the beloved son born to him at an old age, in fulfillment of a promise from the Most High. We see Isaac, a shadow of Messiah to come some 2,000 years later. We understand the Peshat, the simplest level of understanding, the test of Abraham's faithfulness to Jehovah, and how that applies to our own lives with respect to giving up the things which are important to us at the request of the Almighty. We understand the Remez level, the hint, about how Yeshua would come and be sacrificed by his own father as the perfect atonement so that we might be able to be reconciled to him. There is another way to look at this picture, and that is the drosh, a devotional level, not as we learn the lessons of Abraham, but where we see ourselves as Isaac. Just as Isaac is born in Abraham's old age, we are born late in the process of time. Perhaps we are indeed close to the end of this age. We anxiously await the return of our king, but many things must happen between now and then. We are also, in some sense, facing our own mortality, as threats of terrorism, epidemics, and earth changes rip through our headlines every day. At first, Isaac did not understand his father's intentions. He neither knew where they were going, nor what Jehovah had commanded Abraham to do. Yet it says that the two of them walked together. Many times in artistic renditions of this event, we see Isaac depicted as a young boy. However, it appears from the narrative that he was probably in his mid to late thirties. It is stated in the Jewish commentary, Tsena Urena, that Isaac was thirty-seven years old. Abraham was more than a hundred and thirty years old. Thus, it is important to realize that Isaac could have overpowered his father or simply just run away, but it says they walked together. As it becomes apparent that Isaac himself is the one who will be laid on the altar, he makes no protest. His father has told him that Elohim would provide the lamb, and somehow he becomes reconciled in his mind that he himself must be that lamb. Personally, I cannot imagine it. Human sacrifice is strictly condemned by Jehovah, yet it is written that Abraham is an obedient follower, keeper of all the laws and statutes. Whatever is Isaac thinking, we cannot know. But he manages to trust his father. One thing we have read is that Abraham loves Isaac. Did you know that this is the first mention of the word love in the Bible? I hope you know how much the Father in heaven loves you, although sometimes you might feel like you are going to die from your trials. Will you still trust him in the midst, even if it does mean your life? In fact, neither Abraham nor Isaac knew where they were going. Isaac simply follows his father. When we start our walk with the Lord, we don't know where we are going either. One day, thirty-some-odd years ago, the Lord told me that I would be an encouragement to the Gentiles. In 2017, I found myself teaching Hebrew in a remote region of India. Proverbs 20:24 20, says, A man's steps are of Jehovah." How then can a man understand his own way? Also in Proverbs 21, 1, 
The king's heart is in the hand of Jehovah, like the rivers of water. He turns it wherever he wishes. As father and son arrive to the appointed place, Abraham leaves his servants behind. When you walk this walk, the most difficult times, you walk alone. Only the Father is with you. The last word of Genesis 22, verse 6 in Hebrew is yachdav, a word related to the word echad, a word you probably know from the Shema. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. The word yachdav is translated as together in every English Bible translation back to Wycliffe. But our English word together comes from the idea of being gathered. We might think of some people being gathered together at a subway station or at the mall, but this is not the Hebrew thought behind yachad and echad. Those thoughts involve unity as one. The word yachdav, together, also has the same root as the word for riddle, which begins by dividing the hearer from the listener by creating a barrier between the two. The riddle ends with the answer, which unites the two, sometimes even in laughter. There is a riddle in Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if you know? Here is the riddle of Isaac walking with Abraham. There was wood, fire, and a knife, but no ram. This was the riddle, and Isaac could surmise the answer. Yet he walked with his father, in unity. Isaac was willingly joined to Abraham for the venture. It is written in Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now face is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And again in verse 10, about Abraham, it says, For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Isaac himself becomes the evidence of something unseen, as you are, a fulfillment of ancient prophecies concerning the timing of this day, the return of the whole house, the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David. Isaac is not only an example of our lives to us individually, he is also a type of the members of the body of Messiah together. We are called to walk in unity with the Father and with each other. We are the children of Abraham, as Paul has written in Galatians 3, 7. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And again in verse 29, And if you are Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. How can we walk in the same kind of unity with our Heavenly Father? as Isaac walked with his father Abraham? Isaac, aside from having heard the story of his own miraculous birth, was an observer of the events of Abraham's life, of Abraham's witness, and thereby learned to trust his father. And so we are to do likewise. You know that Isaac means laughter. I imagine he was more than happy when that ram turned up in the thicket as an answer to the riddle. I had a young friend long ago who took his first plane ride and his parents reported that he had a great time. He didn't think about someone hijacking the plane or the plane malfunctioning and going down. He perfectly trusted his parents to take him on that plane. He was having so much fun, he wanted to know why everyone else wasn't laughing like he was. Can we have that attitude? We already know the answer to the riddle. Isaac is Yeshua, and we are part of his body. Whatever happens in the coming days, our Father loves us, we trust him. He holds us in the palm of his hand. Our eternal outcome is not only completely secure, but absolutely amazing and beyond our wildest imagination. We can be laughter. We can be Isaac and enjoy what we have from the Father's hand because the price has already been paid. The solution to all our trials has already been determined, and we are free to walk, yachdav, together in unity with him. And we are going to need that unity, that complete unity with the Father and with the body, so as not to be deceived in the coming days. Shalom.